Well, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for being here today, and thank you for taking part in the, uh, this great process that we enjoy here in, uh, in the United States of America. Uh, I am Ken Jones. I'm the second term mayor of the town of Pine Knoll Shores. I've done a lot of things that I'm going to talk about, and I also want to tell you about what I intend to do going forward as your senator. In uh, my money-making life, I'm a financial planner, small business owner. I've been doing that for 15 years. Um, before that time, I had a career in the United States Air Force. A lot of people ask me, hey, were you enlisted or officer? And my answer is yes. I was both. I got to do both, so that, that was uh, great. But back to the financial planning aspect, and, and this is what really has uh, affected my two terms as uh, mayor. I always ask my employees, what do we do? What do we do simply here in the office? And it's only three words. We solve problems. They say all kinds of things like, you know, we, we sell investments, we do insurance, we do all that kind of stuff. No, we solve problems. We uh, organize retirement, set up retirement funds, and save for retirement for people. We plan for early deaths, we plan for all kinds of stuff like that. But the bottom line is, we solve problems. The other thing I do is, people come in and, I'll be darned, you, you may know some people like that, they spend more than they make. <laughs> Anybody? Yeah. They spend more than they make. And everybody in here has an uncle that does that. Yeah. We must be related, see? Yeah. Right. So, what I do. See that one? Let's try this another way. There you go. What we do is, of course, we don't, I don't tell people to go out and get another job. In other words, increase revenues, but we find a better way to organize that money, be more efficient, and do it smarter. I did the same thing as Mayor of Pine Knoll Shores. Um, I cut the taxes last year. Is that okay? <laughs> Nobody complained. Nobody complained. <laughs> so, as your senator, there's three main areas I want to address. Number one is the economy. We live in a country that has the highest corporate tax rate in the world. And then you come to North Carolina and is the tax rate low or high here? Okay, that was a rhetorical question, it's high. Exactly, so then we, we are here in North Carolina and we're trying to bring industry here and they don't wanna come. You think we know why already? Yeah, it's the tax structure and it's the same way at the federal level. We now are in a situation here in North Carolina and, and uh, I know the gas tax thing is really popular. Used to be there was a cap to the gas tax and no bottom. Now there's a bottom to it and no cap. We went in the wrong direction in that way. I'm not in favor of using taxpayer money as incentive to bring businesses or companies here. I'm in favor, I'm in favor of correcting the tax laws and putting an environment in place that will make companies want to be here and that will employ people. The other thing is, being a small business guy, as I am, and probably a lot of people in this room are, um, it's not easy to start a small business in North Carolina, and a little more difficult to keep it afloat. If 80% of the people in North Carolina are employed by a small company, shouldn't we make the laws more efficient for them? Absolutely, and cut down on paperwork. And, and hopefully, going forward, uh, oops, <laughs> as Republicans, that will keep, keep taking place. Second thing, or second point, is education. The answer is not throwing more money at it. As I said earlier, we don't need to raise more revenues. We need to be smarter about it. I, going forward, we need to provide two different tracks, at least two, maybe three, for students to go. The, the governor's come out and said we need uh, some trade schools. Trade schools. We have the community colleges, and that's what they were there for. Yeah. So let's just be smarter about doing that. When people go through high school, they should be allowed to take a track for college, those people that are absolutely positively going to go to college, and then there are people that don't want to go to college, and they should be able to learn a trade as they go, and if they need to, they can go to the community college and learn it, but they can still become professionals and active members in society and have a skill. <laughs> Third area I want to focus on is infrastructure. And when I talk about infrastructure, I'm not just talking about our roads, I'm also talking about the port the port in Moorhead City, the deepest port in the state of North Carolina, by the way, should be run like a business, probably, shouldn't it? Yeah, yeah it should be, like the government should be, actually. Um, I'm also talking about our waterways, our inlets, 
our railroads. We do have some railroad problems in this state. I'm a, the Senate appointee to the Eastern Region Economic Development Commission. And I was uh, asked to be on that by somebody you probably have heard of before, Gene Preston. Yeah. Okay, a lot of head shaking, yes or no. So, yeah, I, I am on that, and I'm, I'm keenly aware of what Eastern North Carolina needs. Uh, we represent 13 counties, including Craven, Carteret, and Pamico. <laughs> And what we do is we bring jobs here. We try to make things more efficient, try to get companies to come here. But I'll be darned if some of the laws in Raleigh aren't very helpful. And that's one of the things that caused me to want to run for this office because I know what needs to be done. Another thing in infrastructure, I look at our historic areas. We, need a, we have a historic, um, a lot of historic areas here in Eastern North Carolina, Tryon Palace. We need to make sure those places are taken care of because we get a few tourists, tourists here, excuse me, tourists here, and they go to those places. They go to our beaches. We need to take care of those places and our heritage. That's extremely important. I always say that the best government is the government that's closest to the people because you can reach out and touch them, right? That's a good thing. When I first became mayor in Pine Mill Shores, I was standing out by the road, my neighbor came over and she said, Ken, now that you're mayor, what do we call you? And I said, now that I work for you, I guess you can call me anything you want. <laughs> so uh, as your senator, I want to have town hall meetings. I want to have one town hall meeting a month somewhere in the district. Now, there's three counties in the district, so hopefully in every area, or every county, rather, during the quarter. But it depends on what's going on. We need to focus on the problems. And I don't want to do this because I want to talk. I want to do this because I want to hear what people have to say. And that's one of the things I've done in uh, Pine Hill Shores as well, is I've heard it over and over and over again. You have the most open government that I've ever seen. Well, before we pass the budget, I personally get up before at least four or five meetings and brief the budget to everybody and take questions. I call that little exercise, stump the dummy. But uh, anyway, that's very important because after all, like I said, the best government is the government that's closest to the people. Having said that, I want you to know I'm energized, I'm a conservative, I'm experienced, and I'm a leader. And I appreciate your vote in this primary. Thank you very much.